through the Wednesday, April 20th, 2022 electronic meeting of the Transportation Commission meeting, uh, Transportation Commission. Uh, this meeting is being held electronically to protect public health and safety. We'll conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. Public comment will be via telephone or Zoom. So this is for real this time, right? That Zoom, people can join the meeting via Zoom. Awesome. Uh, so to speak during any of the public comment opportunities, please call 206-337-9723 and enter meeting ID number 960-2232-8201. Or you can join via the Zoom link. Uh, this information is also in the published agenda and other places on the city website. I'm now going to ask Raymond to call the roll. Very good. All right, uh, Commissioner Baldo Rama. Hello, calling in from Ann Arbor. And yes, again, thank you for the reminder to uh, indicate where uh, you are calling in from. So thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Boland. Here, calling in from Ann Arbor. Councilmember Briggs. Here in Ann Arbor. Commissioner Broven. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hadamaki. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hull. Here from College Park, Maryland. Commissioner Kleinman. Here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Lee. Commissioner Smith. Here from Webster Township, Michigan. Commissioner Summers. Here from Ann Arbor. Thank you. And Commissioner Wannenkoff. Here from Ann Arbor. Uh, Commissioner Hess, here from Ann Arbor. Commissioner Hutchinson. Here from Ann Arbor. Uh, Lieutenant Mike Sherba. You're remotely from Tyrone Township. Very good, Molly. We do have a quorum. Great, thank you. Um, so before we launch into the meeting, I so I wanted to try something. Oh, Commissioner uh, uh, Commissioner Lee, did you not get called? I don't think so. Or I, I just joined, so I don't know if uh, I didn't hear myself. But hello, I'm here <laughs> from Ann Arbor. So. Yes, thank you. Um, so, okay, right. So I was going to say that, um, we're going to try something a little different, which is I noticed at some other commissions, they just call everybody by first names and it felt to me like a sort of more approachable, friendly way to sort of conduct meetings. And so I would like to, to try just using first names, um, this, the sort of convention of using commissioner, whoever, it was existed on the commission when I joined, and so I was like reluctant to change it. But I think we're gonna we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna try first names tonight. If we hate it, let me know, and we can go back to formalities. Um, but so that's I just wanted to like be explicit about that because it was like one of those conventions I sort of had to adapt to when I joined. And anyway, so we're gonna try first names, see how it feels. Um, now moving into the consent agenda. Uh, are there any modifications to the consent agenda? Okay, uh, so uh, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Um, awesome, I see Megan and I need a second. I'll take that from Brett. I have to now break the habit of doing commissioner so-and-so. Um, okay, all those in favor, please physically raise your hand. All those opposed, any abstentions? Uh, consent agenda passes. Uh, now we're going to move into public comment. So this is an opportunity for people to speak to the commission for up to three minutes. Uh, again, if you'd like to speak to the commission, please call 206-337-9723 and enter meeting ID number 960-2232-8200 or connect via Zoom, Zoom as described on the agenda. City staff will select callers that have raised their hand one by one using the last three digits of your phone number or your Zoom ID. In order to raise your hand, please press star nine on your phone or select the raise hand button in Zoom. You'll hear an automated announcement that the host is allowing you to speak. Um, Raymond, do we have any um, callers? 
We do not at this time. Um, I was expecting at least one. There was, uh, you may have seen in the communications that someone was uh, wanting to speak to, um, I think the, the SWIFT roundabout and some of that that came out of the Lower Town study. Um, so that, oh, well, let's see, I had someone that just joined. Um, if someone, uh, if one of our uh, Zoom uh, folks who just joined would like to speak. We are in public comment. Please feel free to ra uh, raise your hand in the Zoom function. Um, while we wait for that, I do want to make one little note and see if the Commission has any direction. Um, we do get these periodic emails that come to the Commission inbox. You have an inbox. We moderate that. Um, one thing I'm, I'm trying to do to kind of reduce the amount of attachments is if there's a string of communications, um, I include it as one attachment with the whole string included. If your preference would be for me to break those out as individual communications, I'm happy to do that. So I just, you know, wanted to tell you what my practice is, but I'm willing to change if, if you give me direction to do so. so. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think having it all in one thread is probably easier and less, less clicking in Legistar. Um, so that sounds good. Anyone who wanted to, did the public commenter, anyone? Yeah, I don't see anyone raising their hand yet. I do have a couple uh, names that I, I don't recognize. So if anyone uh, is dialing in from the public, either uh, via phone call or Zoom, uh, we are in the public comment section of the agenda. So feel free to hit the uh, raise hand feature if you wish to address the commission, and then I will uh, promote you to speak. All right, well, why don't we move along? We, as we've said in the past, if someone was having technical difficulties, we can reopen public comment later in the agenda if needed. Uh, but now we will move on to uh, business, starting with city council transportation issues. So uh, at the February Transportation Commission meeting, council member Briggs uh, asked the commission to provide suggestions about transportation issues that could be brought before city council. So. Uh, as a way to sort of like bring more opportunities for council to like make some changes. Um, so as part of the homework, we were encouraged to review the, the uh, policy agenda recommendations that we approved in January and sort of everyone choose your top three and, and use that as a, as a starting place to, to pick a handful of priorities that we could ask Erica to bring back to, um, to council or to, to start to think about how she might move those um, through council. So Raymond, we had talked about sort of maybe putting up like sharing, doing a shared screen and just sort of like maybe doing a Google doc or something or, or whatever, Word document, something where people can sort of name their priorities and we can start to see if there's some consensus, consensus around some of the things that were on the council agenda. I'll admit, I also added a couple of things that weren't on the agenda <laughs> that, I, that I've been thinking about that I keep hearing about. Um, and other places, but to start, I think we should stick with what's act, what we've already approved as a as policy agenda items. Um, so, I think, let's see, Raymond, are you going to do? A, does that work? Molly, yeah, what I can maybe do is uh, this will be a little clunky, so I apologize, but um, I'll just share the PDF of the uh, local agenda that we did back in January. Yeah. And then I'll just kind of add some like comments to it, either as post-it notes or something like that. And then we can kind of use that to track some of the discussion and nice. see where it goes. That makes sense. Um, so just beg a little bit of patience of you all while I kind of muddle my way through that process. So bear with me here for just a second. And I'll just chime in as this list is getting generated. I certainly welcome feedback um, from staff. If there's obviously these are things that we're going to end up putting on your your plate. If there is consensus and you want to share, you know, thoughts around timing or you know different things like that, that's that's also helpful to know in this process. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I meant to ask if there was anything you wanted to to add. Uh... So did my screen come up and you mm -hmm. won't see that? Yep. Okay, very good. So we can just maybe, 
why don't we just sort of go around and name our, like if folks have done the homework or if we want to take just a moment and um, review what's on the, what's on this list. Um, it's funny that I don't know where the underlines came from. I have them in my oh, document. Yeah, sorry. Those were um, new. So the, um, if you Whoa. go to the very top of the document, it mm -hmm. shows that any of the new additions uh, for fiscal year 22 are underlined and then anything we removed was uh, struck through. So, um, Okay, thanks. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, if you want, I can just do a very quick run through on what yeah. these are, uh, kind of synopsize them if that helps with the discussion, and then uh, we can go from there. Yeah. yeah All right, so the first one is about uh, strengthening partnerships. Uh, the second bullet is about removing parking minimums. Uh, the third bullet is uh, data-driven decision-making. Uh, the next one is bicycle purchase uh, incentive program. Uh, next, we have transit-supported development. Uh, the next two bullets are somewhat related. There's uh, transit commuting, making it faster, more convenient, and cheaper. Uh, and then similarly, the bullet after that is to um, improve on-time travel on bus routes with transit-only lanes and signals. Uh, the next one down is to make sure that uh, bike lanes are clear of obstruction. Uh, next is a major streets traffic calming program. Uh, then uh, the next bullet, which has a series of sub bullets, talks about clean energy vehicles. Um, and then the last two bullets, uh, second to last, is about a local power grid. And the very last one is about winter sidewalk maintenance. Awesome. Um, all right. And if you, so we're not seeing the entire agenda. Um, yeah, the scrolling is fine, but we, and we can start at the top, but just to, to be clear. So why don't we, I'm just sort of going to go in order of who I see in my little Brady Bunch screen and just call on folks. Uh, and if you need more time, you can just pass. So the first person I see is Wu. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so I think Advocating for local level policy and land use investments that encourages transit supported development, obviously. Um, and I have to make one specific disclaimer. I work for an employer that owns land in TC1. So I want to just make that clear. Uh, that being said, I do think it's in the uh, best interest of the community to advocate for um, additional investments, I think in, in basically like transportation infrastructure. So connected sidewalks, sidewalks on both sides of the, the streets, um, managing okay. private landowners and connectivity in sidewalks, because that can get kind of difficult in terms of public right of way. So doing what we can to make sure that we do have connected bikeways, connected sidewalks. Um, and then so the local level policy and land use investment you know, from like a land use standpoint, I think we have it. But then from the transportation side, I think it's important for us to also advocate for connected bike lanes, connected, you know, B2B paths, um, et cetera. So that's number one for me. Um, number two would be prioritizing data-driven decision-making. Um, obviously, that's the best way to, I think, go about things. So collecting travel patterns, daisy chaining, you know, likelihoods, things like that, uh, benchmarking and statistical data collection. Uh, like Raymond, for example, when you gave us the data on Main Street, for example, um, I thought, you know, the, the, the single lane uh, for safety considerations, the adherence to, you know, speed limits, things like that, that kind of data um, is very, very helpful for explaining to people that, you know, so I, I think data driven decision making and having more um, robust uh, data collection that is useful and it, it helps to make salient points. Uh, for us to know where to spend time on. Um, <clears throat> the last thing uh, for me actually is the uh, on-time travel with bus routes, um, potentially transit-only lanes and signals that prioritize buses. Um, I think, I really think that AAATA needs to do a better job of, um, you know, really showing that public transit can be efficient and a preferable way to get around, as opposed to 
you know, it's like somebody's last resort and somebody's pulling their nose, you know, their nose right next to you kind of thing. Like I want there to be uh, a more positive um, social association with taking public transit, that it's cheaper, it's easier, it's more convenient. So, so those kinds of things I think are very important. Um, uh, Molly, is this the kind of feedback that you were looking for? Sorry, I just wanted to make sure. So those were my top three. I think so. And I'm going to just bump that over to Erica since this is for really, I think, for her use. Well, it, and um, it, I mean, it sort of is, it, it, I mean, in terms of, you know, as we're looking at prioritizing here, I'm also looking for things that specifically may not be underway, for example, transit, you know, oriented development, things that um, you'd really like me to be um you know, introducing at the council table, um, maybe bringing back to transport, you know, bringing back to transportation commission for more work at the direction of, of council, um, you know, some different pieces that we may want to be spending, prioritizing our time on um, over the next, um, next couple of years in terms of you know, policy, policy work. So some of this is, you know, you know some of this is, is approaches that the staff is already using that we're encouraging, um, but, yeah. Got it. Gotcha. Cool. Um, all right. If I was to just really quickly summarize, then Erica would be um, aligning transportation um, infrastructure investments with land use, like really coordinating land use and transportation policy. So the thought of having these, you know, developments needs to be done in tandem with inform, like reinforcing and strengthening bike lane connectivity, um, B two B trails as well as uh, bus routes that are on time and more convenient. So I think, you know, it, it can't happen just by, you know, uh, and it really needs to be kind of like a private public uh, collaboration. So that, that would be like kind of like my big one. So hopefully that helps. Thank you. Um, all right, next up, I see Julie. Hi, um, so, one thing that for me is a no brainer is advocate for the development of a major street traffic calming program. I hope that's already underway because it's part of the vision zero implementation plan. So maybe I can call that zero instead of my first one. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to second one rule on increasing the on-time travel on bus routes and making that a more desirable. Um, I've, I've started trying to take the bus again after a long absence from it during the pandemic. And, and there continue to be things that are annoying about it. Like I, I was trying to plan my route from campus to home and it kept, and I, I work at East Hall, which is right near the central campus transit center. And it kept directing me to somewhere way across campus to catch the bus. And I, I actually called and said, you know, to make sure that the bus was actually still stopping at the Central Campus Transit Center. And it was, but some, somehow the, the software tools weren't working properly. Um, there's just like everything we can do to make that the best way to get around town other than, you know, bike, biking or walking, which for some people that will never be the best way. Um, but the bus can work for a lot of people if we make it nice. So, so that, that's big for me. Um, and then I know it's super expensive, but I think the winter sidewalk um, maintenance can really make a big difference in a lot of people's wintertime lives and especially some of the more vulnerable populations. And so it's kind of an equity issue also. Um, so I wanted to put that in my top three. And then um, I would also rank removing parking minimums um, high on my list. So that's the second bullet point. And that's related to my, um, you know, wanting to make the bus use more attractive and, and just making it uh, less attractive to rely solely on your car for getting around town. Great, thank you. Megan is next. Hello, um, yeah, Julie, I think I agree with a lot of what you just said. Um, and everything looks so great, so it was hard to 
choose. But I have been thinking about uh, winter sidewalk maintenance for since I moved up north, basically. Um, so definitely would second that. I think that there's a pilot already happening. So that was on my mind too. Um, very happy about that. Um, parking minimums also was on my list, removing, removing them, that is. Um, and for all the reasons that Julie said, um, I think uh, traffic calming also, um, I was also had um, restructuring parking fees. Um, and of course that has to be coupled with increasing bus frequency. Um, I think that parking downtown is like kind of shockingly cheap right now. Um, so I would love to see us uh, maybe change that just to, again, make it a little bit more attractive to take the bus downtown. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much what I had. Um, but yeah, everything, everything looks great. Great, thanks. Next Thank up is, is Brett. Thank you. Um, first, uh, I would, um, and these are in no particular order, but the major streets traffic calming, I want, would, uh, would really like to see that be funded, well-funded. Uh, I kind of along with that, um, a lot more consideration for road diets that might be assumed to be part of that effort. Um, I had removed parking minimums on here, but I think that's coming to council very soon. I know planning just passed that. So maybe I'll hope, you know, uh, optimistically hope that that's a foregone conclusion. Um, generally funding bike and uh, all ages, all abilities, bike network infrastructure outside the, the DDA. So to build on um, or build a, all ages, all abilities, bike network. That's um, you know, what we've done within the DDA is amazing and awesome and it keeps going every year, but I'd really like to see that expanded outside of the DDA. And um, again, because I don't think we need to really focus on the parking minimums, um, I would like to uh, choose the faster, more convenient uh, transit uh, su supporting that. Um, and I really like the addition that I think it was Megan said, or I can't remember who, um, about um, in uh, downtown parking rights, you know, in, in cooperation with that. I think it's something that council can, well, maybe not, maybe it's a DDA thing, but um, yeah, to, to make transit more attractive, um, as an alternative and just by convenience. Thank you. Great, thanks. Um, Erica, I don't know if you wanted to contribute. You're next on my on my list of people. If you have, if you wanna share what you feel are some of your big priorities. Well, I guess there's a couple of things that have come up that I probably could have asked, mentioned this at the beginning that I wouldn't mind feedback on. Um, so one thing that I could imagine that it might be useful for us to re-examine um, is our crosswalk design guidelines and make sure, I know that we've gone through that process a few years ago, making sure that um, revisiting those and seeing if they still seem appropriate in terms of um, the use of uh, on certain more major streets, kind of the, the, the use of RFBs and things like that, just kind of going through that process. I don't know if that's something of interest. Um, it's something that's kind of come up for me. That's something something we might want to take a look at again. Obviously, there's a variety of different factors that we need to look at in that. Um, and then the neighborhood tax calming program is something that I have, um, you know, we have a long list of neighborhoods that waiting lists for neighborhoods that are interested in this, I can tell you by neighborhoods that are hold interested. Hold on a sec, Erica. I'm just going to, sure. oh, all right. I, someone was unmuted, but it looks like they muted. So if you could just say that last bit again. Oh, sure. So yeah. the neighborhood traffic calming program is also something that there's a long waiting list for. Um, you know, I think it's very labor intensive from the staff perspective. Um, it takes a number of years to get there. We don't have enough funding for it. To, so, 
you know, taking a look at that program and making sure, you know, are the, the standards that we are using right now, do we think that that's kind of appropriate? And this is just a challenge that we're in. Um, so those are two th questions I guess I have for the, for the group in terms of how much of a priority um, some of these things that kind of come up for me are um, for the commission at, at large, obviously. I support all of the things <laughs> that are on this list, list too. Right. Yeah. I was thinking maybe at the end we can sort of open it up for things that are not on this list um, to like, like talk about those. I have one that I want to add as well and, and see if there are other, see if we, if there's consensus around some of those as well. Um, so thanks. That sounds great. Next up is Aureli. I'm really glad I wasn't in the earlier group because I <laughs> it was really difficult to narrow it down. Um, but expanding infrastructure for parking spe facilities, specifically for bikes, um, and I would even think to add um, like a shelter um, just to connect like bicycles to like buses, so that if there's like a park, um, like parking specifically for bikes is what I was like envisioning that, and I think that would be pretty neat. Um, increase on time, like travel um, and transit only lanes. I, I like that one as well. Um, and of course, um, winter sidewalk maintenance. Great. Also Thank a you. priority. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, excuse me, Aurelia, did I, did I capture for the, the first point you mentioned about bike facilities, was that an existing bullet that I'm missing? Or is that a new uh, thought for like a new idea? It was the expand infrastructure um, specifically for like bicycle parking. And I just thought that it would be neat to connect that to like shelter, like bus shelters, just to increase connections between bicycles and bus. Buses is what I, I added. I know, sorry, we were supposed to wait until the end for. It's fine. It gives people a chance to, to mull these additions over, I think. Um, awesome. Raymond, do you have it? Yeah, I might need, let me just get caught up on this typing since I got lost on, on Aureli's first point. So, okay. um, fortunately, this is a light agenda this week. So we have time to really like sink our teeth into this particular topic for a little while. And then Aureli, what was your second one? I'm sorry. Um, increase on time travel. The one that's under the yeah, that one that's underlined. Your third one. Winter sidewalk maintenance. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Looking Thank forward you. to see how that materializes. Yeah. All right. Next up is Tim. Yeah. So uh, yeah, going through this, uh, I think the. Uh, the I guess uh, I think I want to put the park, parking minimums on there, and that's one of them. And the two transit ones are both standing out, but might go with the uh, the make transit commuting faster one, the one about the, like, I mean, it's hard to pick between the two, but I want to get those both, like, but and uh, go with the first one of them and then go with the winter sidewalk maintenance. Definitely want that. Well, I, I guess I'll just go with both the transit ones and the winter sidewalk maintenance. I know the parking minimums is already a priority for them for sure. And because it went through the planning commission already and uh, just uh yeah in general i think the transit needs to be more and the winter sidewalks is definitely something that can be a big barrier for a lot of people that particularly people with disabilities and but yeah the transit i wish it would say in general improving frequency because not just the busiest times of day i mean actually the less busy times of day can be the worst parts. Like, yeah, I mean, nights and weekends. And I think that's actually what they want to focus on because a lot of times the busiest times of day are covered pretty well, whereas it's more the off peak that is uh, not covered as well. And uh, 
where it's like there's not a, like it's running once an hour and then if you want to make a connection then it can be even worse because the connections may not line up and it's like oh you have to sit for a half hour at Blake Transit Center well no one wants to do that trip then unless they have to I mean, wait time is bad enough if it's at the end points, but wait times at the transfer points is worse. Yeah. Particularly in winter. <laughs> right, right. Um, all right. I'm sticking. Let's see here. I think next up I see Jim. Okay. Wait. Hello, everybody. So this is tough for me to, I mean, there's a lot to unpack here and choose from it. All good. We should be doing all of it. To pick three is kind of tough, but, um, you know, disclaimer, we own a bike shop, so I'm going to stick with anything that brings more people into town and across town with bike. So, you know, bike, purchasing incentive, um, you know, including non-electric bike is going to be high. I mean, we honestly do this because we think it's the absolute best thing within our skill set that we can do to, um, I don't know, save the planet, I guess. Um, so there really should be some type of Instead of programs for, to get people, more people on bike, white electric vehicle, scooter, um, any, you know, white electric mobility. And the, the, the city really does have a very powerful uh, ability to get that idea out to the public. And so, Expanding on that, electrifying the public, uh, you know, uh, vehicle is something that should be, you know, very high on the agenda. Uh, yeah, just creating. So I would say the expand and improve the infrastructure and policy to encourage the use of clean energy vehicles. That would be my number two. Uh, and probably the road diet and anything to calm traffic. And if I can add another one, it's going to be keeping the bike lane clear. Um, you know, we use them every single day. And especially entrances to the parking structures and surface parking that cross the bike lane is a big problem. There are at least, you know, at least uh, several times a week when just we encounter, you know, vehicles being parked across the bikeway waiting to get into the parking structure. And so at certain times of day, maybe the entrances that cross the bike way may be closed during heavy times of the day. But that's um I, I guess I guess that's it. It's all good. I could I could just go on and on, but those would be the three that that I would uh, that I would throw in there, and again, I'll just emphasize that on a weekly basis, we're getting one and one people coming in that are really happy and beginning to consider the use of bikes and e-bikes and alternative transportation, private transportation to get into and out of town because of the improvements that are being made. So, I guess okay. that's it. Thanks. Um, next up is Suzette. I'm muted. You, now <laughs> we were both muted. Um, you have it. We still can't hear you, unfortunately, but hold on. 
Uh, Raymond, can you unmute her? Hey, can you hear me there. now? Yes, we got you. Amazing. I have a work computer compatibility thing. I also have COVID, which is sound, why sound awful? Um, I really liked all the funding related ones for the trans infrastructure. I think it's the fourth one down that talks about um, at the state level, advocating for increased transit funding, both local and regional. Um, I saw a really nice thing on the internet that talked about how we don't pay to use street lights. We shouldn't have to pay to use buses, just framing um, transit as a basic citizen right. And I like that. Um, going down, I think this one's been tapped on a lot. The making transit infrastructure, the strive to make transit commuting infrastructure faster, more convenient, cheaper, et cetera. And also the winter sidewalk maintenance. Um, the one question I had though, um, was about allowing the RTA the ability to request sales tax or an alternative to property tax. And was curious what the motivation was to shift away from property tax. Since in general, I think of property tax as being um, more equitable in terms of how it requires money from people. Yeah, I think the issue with the RTA was that, be and folks who've been more embedded in this can correct me if I'm wrong, but that in part because of the reliance on property tax, there's um, different uh, municip municipalities keep voting to opt out. Um, and I think the hope was that if there could be some alternative funding mechanism, we could sidestep those people who keep voting to opt out and actually create a, a, like a useful network by funding it in some other way, instead of relying on like suburbanites to vote to fund transit that they don't think of as being for them. Um, that's my understanding of the motivation for that particular item. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I think it requires a change to the constitution and as such would have to be on the ballot. But I know like a lot of other municipalities and other states fund it with a local sales tax and that Often, yeah, I mean, the property tax ends up, uh, yeah, getting a lot of opposition because it's like a bunch of like people with uh, homeowners that have like large homes in the suburbs that are just like upset about it. And yeah, they either opt out or they cause it to fail, which like the RTA property tax has no opt out mechanism, but the last time they put it on the ballot, it failed because of the votes of those suburban and exurban. Uh, voters yeah. and right. uh i guess the idea is to offer more flexibility and yeah i mean that's one of the ideas though that would require a constitutional amendment the other idea is to allow a tax to be imposed on a subset of the three county region right. which wouldn't allow opt-outs they because the board would have to settle on the subset it wouldn't be like a, a, a but it would allow them to essentially draw in the urbanized, only impose it on the urbanized area in which uh, offering service would make sense, like particularly fixed route service. Right. Um, thank you. Thanks for that explanation, Tim. So yeah, that's the that's the backstory with that, with yeah. that one. And also that, I, I guess I didn't put that down because that's on the state level list and we were told right. to go to the council level list. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think for today, we're I think we're we're, we're trying to focus mostly on things that um, that our city council can do without sort of lobbying or larger statewide action. Um, but worth checking in on some of these because I know um, Suzette and also Megan I think joined the commission after we did this round of policy recommending, and so I think it's still it's fine to revisit some of those and explain them a little bit. So. I was sticking just to the council members who are members of the public and not the um, commissioners who are here in their professional roles. So I think we're up to me now. And I had, so I'm gonna have parking minimums be my zero because I know council's working on it, but I just wanna like put another like vo voice towards like, really please do that. And then like many others, the, bus lanes and single priority ones. So increase the one that starts with increase on time travel uh, for buses just feels huge to me. And I know that there are, there are actions council can take around 
things like signal priority and lane um, bus lanes. I know a lot of the bus related transit related things requires coordination with AAATA, but there are but some of these are infrastructure things that I know council can do independently. Um, so that's why that's one of my big ones. Major streets traffic calming uh, is another big one for me. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna go with winter sidewalk maintenance, like several others have, despite knowing how expensive it is. And then I'll also sort of kick off the adding possibilities discussion, which I think the way to do this, so I think we just don't spend the entire night on it, is limit yourself to one. If you if you have something else you want to add, and I I actually think we've this has been pretty clarifying to me about some of the core priorities for members of this commission. Um, but if there's anything else you want to add, let's try to keep it to one and try to keep discussion of each thing pretty brief. Um, but but there just to see if there are some things that um, that haven't surfaced yet. For me, the one I want to add is banning right on red downtown. Um, it's it's pedestrian heavy zone and right on like turn the turn vehicle turns are the things that are often most dangerous for pedestrians and bike and bicyclists and so um that particular thing banning uh banning right turn on uh, downtown i think would make a big difference i i think citywide would probably be a stretch so i'm gonna try and keep it narrow to downtown um i think at this point it might be easier Raymond, if you could unshare your screen um, so we can all sort of see each other again. Um, if we need to refer back to it again, we can we can ask you to reshare. Um, so how about uh, we sort of let people throw out if there's one more thing you want to add, we'll let folks throw those out and then we'll talk about them. So we'll do it. Suggestions and then discussions. Anyone else have anything they wanted to add? Julie. Um, I would just second Erica on the neighborhood traffic calming program, because that's, I mean, in, in, in this, in this one sense, it's a huge success in our ability to engage the community and, um, you know, local, locally advocate for things, but the backlog is just embarrassing and frustrating. And so that makes our, it sort of ruins our success. The one thing I don't like about the neighborhood, um, traffic calming program is that it's a real squeaky wheel program. And so I would also like to see it um, take a local neighborhood request and try and think not just about that one block or that one street, but the sort of connecting streets also so that it broadened it a little bit. Plus, plus one to all of that. Um, yes, Brian. First, thank you for uh, all the endorsements of the, the transit options um, and interesting discussion too about uh, some of the technology. I, I don't think it's something new, but I would say for, for me as a transportation commission member, it definitely is a number one of being data driven. Um, I think the rest of the, the items kind of fall out from there um, because if you're, if, you, you need to have that that data driven approach to say we need to eliminate you know car traffic on this lane or in this you know it, there's there's room only for bikes and buses down this road um, and then you know you have to be data driven to to do that and it can be a very emotional argument to the contrary at times so um, but that would be my two cents Thank you. Jim. So I don't think this was on the list, but we haven't had a downtown bike share system in a long time. So, you know, bike share, e-bike share, we travel to other cities all over the United States. And we can go ride a bike and run across town. So, and we constantly get, we, we cannot do it at the business. We don't have the resources to rent bikes. And on the weekends, we get just request after request for a rental bike. So I think like at the bus station, the train station in Terrytown and, you know, downtown, 
we need to get bike sharing back up and running. I mean, to me, it seems like it would be a relatively inexpensive endeavor for the city to just say, we're going to lose money on it, but people need to have bikes, especially people that are visiting. Instead of driving their cars around town, they can park their car and ride some bikes if they have access to them. Yeah, that's a great, a great addition. Anyone else? Megan. Um, so thank you for bringing up the banding ride on red, because that was also something I was thinking about, which means I can bring up my other thing, um, which I am like totally open to discussing this because I think you all have talked about it before. Um, but making uh, like pedestrian walk phases automatic. Um, I know that we did that during the beginning of the pandemic and it was just incredibly useful, um, especially by the hospital making, like knowing that that signal is gonna come on. Um, it just, it honestly, like in terms of my behavior, it prevents me from trying to jaywalk because I know that the signal is gonna come. Whereas if I am not sure, if I think I just missed the signal or whatever, I'm more likely to try and uh, maybe make a risky crossing. So um, I know that we do this downtown. I would love to see it maybe expanded, especially in, if not everywhere, at least in um, areas with a lot of pedestrian traffic. Yeah, that's a great one. All right, so I'm, I'm cognizant that we still have other things to talk about. So I'm wondering if we can just do sort of like a quick, sort of like group thumbs ups for things that we are like on board with to maybe add like of the things that we've just added. And thumbs up is, is one where you like, it's gotta be like a big thumbs up, right? Cause we don't, we could all just say yes to all of it. And we're trying to give Erica, I think a clearer sense of, of the stuff we really um, wanted to invest some time and energy and political capital in. So the first couple, I think Raymond, Raymond, do you have the whole list? Have you been documenting it? So can you read it out to us or? I do. Yeah, I can either share a screen or I can just read them off, whatever your preference is. We should probably do both because that is the most accessible way. Right. Let me. Okay. So here at the bottom, whoops. Uh, and um, I, Molly, remind me, we do have a caller with their hand up. Bethany, as oh, soon as we wrap okay. up this conversation, I'll turn it over to the chair to. Okay. Um, to reopen public comment. Great. Yeah. So uh, the first one that I, I captured was uh, crosswalk design guidelines and appropriateness okay. um, by Erica, the neighborhood traffic calming backlog and process uh, by both Erica and Julie, uh, funding for transit. So uh, even though Suzette brought this from the state agenda, I think there is a conversation about you know just funding for transit improvements in general that could be part of a local discussion as well. Um, and then the no turn on red downtown by Molly. Uh, bike share by Jim and Ted recalls or no big buttons by Megan. Great. Okay. So unfortunately now we have to go back. We have to have you unshare the screen so we can actually see everyone's responses. So I'll just read them out again, real, like real quick. And we'll do our little thumbs ups as we go. Um, I've got to grab the screenshot real quick. So uh, crosswalk design guidelines and appropriateness. Molly, how many thumbs can we do? <laughs> we all have two thumbs, so why don't we go with two? <laughs> Although I probably want to do more, but that makes it hard. But we're going to try and make this useful for, for Erica. So for those of you who already gave one, I'll give you a moment to like consider if that's one of your thumbs. Um, crosswalk design guidelines and appropriateness. I'm like literally tucking my thumbs in because I don't want to accidentally do it. Okay. Uh, neighborhood traffic calming backlog and process. This is a really tough. No, I'm going to go with this. Okay. And if you all could do me a favor, because I'm looking at two different screens, if you could just read off the number of people who have thumbs up, then I'll yeah, just so add one, that as a two, plus three, three plus four, three. five. Five. Uh, funding. Oh, so I think, Suzette, is it okay if we leave off the funding for transit, which was the state? That was like, I think the state one. Um, oh, it looks like we might have lost Suzette actually. Um, okay. I'm going to leave that one off because it's state agenda. Um, no turn on red downtown. 
One, two, three, four, five. Five. Um, bike share. I really wanted to do this one too. Bike share. We've got oh, only one. Okay. And uh, pedestrian recalls, AKA no beg buttons. The pedestrians just get a, get a cycle. Just one. I really, I want, I want, I want that one too. So <laughs> some of those, like the, the pet recall thing maybe doesn't even know to, need to go to council, right? Like maybe that's just a thing we do more of. Yeah, and Megan and I had a little bit of a sidebar, as she indicated. Um, if you'd like, we can come back with some of our engineers to kind of talk through some of these discussions that from a, you know, design perspective and some of the trade-offs. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, if that's a request for a future agenda item, we can definitely bring that forward. That's fine um, with me. And Molly, if I may, if I, may um, I didn't capture a number for the first crosswalk design guidelines and appropriateness. Um, I, think that, I, I think it got none. Once we once we, okay, so that's fine. First we saw some thumbs up, but then when we said you only get two thumbs, okay. I think okay, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Okay. Um okay. So Erica, do you feel was this useful? Do you feel like you have some I do, and I you know, I mean it, yes, it's very helpful for me to okay. just get it, you know, be able to hear from you at this point of the year, be able to kind of identify how I should be spending my time and you know, conversations I should be having with with staff and conversations that we should be having in terms of what we could bring back to, for you know, longer, you know, presentations here or whatnot. So this is super helpful. Awesome. And Erica, what I can do is uh, tomorrow or sometime in the next day or so, I'll, I'll like rank order them based on the number of votes that were had, um, and that'll make it into the minutes next month. But I'll get it to you in advance, so that way you have it at your fingertips. Great. Thanks so much. This was fun. We don't often have a thing where we hear from everyone on the commission and I, I appreciated getting to hear a bit from, from most folks. So thanks everyone. And now it sounds like we're gonna reopen public comment. We've got one caller. We do, uh, we have uh, two hands that have gone up. Okay. Um, Bethany, I will unmute you first because uh, I think you had your hand up first. So let me go ahead and... Uh, allow you to talk. So Bethany, you uh, are allowed to talk. Go ahead and unmute yourself and the floor is yours. And Raymond, I'll, you want me to keep time? Um, sure, that'd be oh. helpful. Thank you. Got it. Yep. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Wonderful. Thank you, first of all, for having us and allowing us to um, listen in on all the insights. Um, I was curious, is there any discussion about the OHM group's report on the potential roundabout on more and Swift and Longshore and Pontiac Trail. Um, I don't think that's on an agenda currently. Okay, so that's okay. Um, well, that's really my main concern. So I don't know if you have any insights and when that's going to be a topic of discussion. Just because we are the house that's right on the corner, so obviously we have like lots of thoughts about it. Um, first of all, I'll say we're thrilled that people are looking into it because poor Lisa Dish, I think that's how you say your last name, but I've sent so many emails about traffic concerns that we've had. Um, but then we're also very concerned about more going to two-way and we have some you know, kind of thoughts and input about what could make it improved. So I just wanted to, you know, kind of throw that thought out there and see if there was any plans and one that will be discussed to make sure that I'm present. Thanks. So yeah, Raymond, these these kinds of reconfigurations do often come to the commission at some point for a recommendation to council, but it's not it's not on my radar currently. So if you Yeah, correct. And and just as a reminder to the commission, we we presented the lower town study and its final recommendations. Boy, I can't remember if that was December or January before the you know, the final final plan was released. Um, now that the plan has, you know, been finalized and posted online, it's been distributed. Um, so, you know, Bethany's referring to some of the final recommendations in that. Um, but you, you all are correct that, you know, typically for, you know, a project such as that, we would kind of come back, give a presentation on it. There would probably be even some public engagement that would be incorporated as part of it. You know, the, the lower town study is kind of a, a you know, it, it, it's a sub area plan, right? It's kind of just meant to give some recommendations, but then when we move an actual project forward, 
uh, it will go through its own engagement process. And so there will be opportunities for this commission as well as the public uh, to pro provide input into that project as it's developed. Great. So it sounds like, Bethany, there's nothing uh, imminent, but that there will be future opportunities. It's also possible to sign up for updates from the Transportation Commission, and I believe you will then... Do people get the agenda? Like what is, I don't even know what goes in those updates, um, but that's another potential way to sort of keep up with um, what's when things are coming to us. Very good. And now we have a second caller. Um, Adam, I have gone ahead and allowed you to talk. So go ahead and unmute yourself uh, and the floor is yours. Hey, um, I'll, be, I'll be super brief because I know this is kind of out of order and all weird. Uh, but um, just from from the last discussion, a lot of a lot of great ideas. I thought I would just kind of throw something out there that's kind of like a half formed idea, I guess, is just there's a lot of like little neighborhood cut throughs um, between, um, you know, kind of go through some of the super blocks in town and, you know, just um, they're really handy to have. Uh, but a lot of them are in pretty bad shape and kind of deteriorating, crumbling, overgrown, et cetera. Um, I don't know what would really be a good mechanism for the city to kind of handle that, but it would be great if some of those could be, I, I don't know if it would be good for the city to to try to acquire easements on them or or I, I don't know what what the best way of handling that would be. Um, but it would be great if some of those, we could figure out a way to maintain them better. Um, and also think about opportunities for sneaking them in here and there, if they're not, um, you know, if there isn't one, um, like I, I know there's some kind of weirdness getting through from like state to Maine, um, like near bushes there, um, getting from like up in the area around like produce station over to near where bushes is, you know, that's, that's kind of a bit weird. It's an enormous block with golf courses and everything. And I know it's a lot of U of M property there. I don't know if there's a way to do that. And there's, you know, there's a cut through in my neighborhood off of Pauline um, that kind of connects to, um, you know, really a pretty good North South bike route through, um through the dickon neighborhood um and there's a cut through through to pauline there that connects that pretty well through to sio church um but it's you know pretty rough um so yeah just i i don't know what the best way of handling that would be but just kind of an idea to throw out there so thank you thank you and yeah just to clarify I think it became clear as you were talking, but you're talking about pedestrian, like the pedestrian cut throughs that are um, like, yes, little, yeah. like, they feel like little secret paths. Yep. Yep. And I mean, the one, the one in my neighborhood is it's an asphalt path, but it's basically gravel, um, dirt. Um, you know, it's a combination of gravel and dirt and buckthorn. Lovely. Um, all right. Uh, thanks so much, Adam. That we were you were we're almost at three minutes, but thank you. Um, all right. Do we have any other folks raising their hands now that we're doing sort of impromptu oh, timer for three minutes? No, not that I see. Um, so I think we can probably move on. Great. Uh, so next up, we have the fiscal year 2023 budget presentation. So we're inviting. Um, Ann Arbor's Chief Financial Officer, Marty Prashan, to present um, the budget. Very good. I just promoted Marty, so give her just a moment to, there she is. Um, Marty, just a quick question for you. Um, do you want to share your own screen, but I also have your presentation up on mine if you prefer me to just drive and you can just talk through if you tell me, so whatever your preference is. I, I can, I can share, that's fine. Oops. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and promote Thank you. All right, I made you co-host, so you should be able to share your screen now. Are you able to see it? Yep. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, good evening. For those of you that I have not had the pleasure of meeting, I'm Marty Prashan, the city's chief financial officer. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the fiscal year 23 proposed budget as presented to city council this past Monday evening. This presentation will focus on items that Mr. Hess has indicated the commission has specific interest, as well as other items of significance in the transportation area. The city's total proposed fiscal 23 budget is $524 million, comprised of various types of funds with and without restrictions. Typically, the area of greatest focus is the general fund, which you can see is totaling $121.9 million, or approximately 23% of the overall budget. The budget as proposed maintains compliance with the city's fund balance policies, and the city also continues to maintain a AA plus general obligation bond rating, which demonstrates our fiscal health. This in turn positions us well in the event we seek to issue debt, like the recent approval to seek a road repair bond, which I'll address more later in the presentation. I'll take a couple of minutes to go over um, Act 51 revenue. Um, Mr. Hess indicated that you all had interest in seeing the uh, historical receipt of Act 51 revenue, as you can see, beginning back in fiscal year 2018 through our estimate of this current fiscal year of 22, we see a consistent rise in revenue. The blue portion of the bar represents the major street fund revenue and the red bar demonstrates the local street share of the Act 51 revenue. The, the red portion is about 3 million and for local streets and the blue portion for the major street fund is, is around 10 million, 10.7 million for 23 is what we have projected. The revenue is shared by the state of Michigan based on a formula that takes into account the miles of roads within the city as well as a population factor. I guess one question that you might ask by looking at the bar, the graph is why we're expecting a decrease in fiscal year 23. At the time we presented or prepared the budget, gasoline prices were on the rise and they still are in that uh, realm at the moment. Therefore, we took a conservative approach because normally when we see prices of gasoline rise, there are fewer gallons of gasoline sold. So we took a, a rather conservative approach and um, decided to revert back to our fiscal year 21 numbers. And it, another thing that you might notice is that we did not really see a decrease in revenue, um, weight and gas tax revenue during COVID, either during the shutdown period or um, the following COVID work from home era. Um, it didn't really seem to impact the revenues are received here, which really was a good thing. On the next slide, um, we'll just talk about how we spend that Act 51 allocation. For fiscal year 23, our expenditure budget is about $30 million. The first category that we call all other includes costs associated with things like customer service, systems planning, asset management, self-insurance, retiree costs, legal support, and general administration. In the ALT category, uh, this represents the alternative transportation fund. And this number here, in this case, represents the annual amount that is transferred over to the alternative transportation fund, which is a separate fund on our books. Um, this does not include services that are provided under the traffic control or right-of-way category, such as pedestrian signal maintenance, RRFB installation and maintenance, along with things like um, bike lane plowing and sweeping that occurs with normal road maintenance. Historically, the contribution to the ALT fund has been about 5% of Act 51. However, in recent years, we've had to escalate that contribution due to rising costs associated with typically um, protected bike lane maintenance, which was more than we had anticipated, and then 
we also had a, a large investment in the Allen Creek Farm Project last year. So we're seeing that contribution rise. In the category of debt service, you'll find the Broadway Bridge Project just debt service, as well as a share of the Wheeler facility debt service. This debt service will also include the projected um, bond, road bond issuance as well. Under the traffic control category, we see uh, traffic signal and sign maintenance and also pavement markings. And then by far the largest category, as you can see by the graph here, is the right-of-way category, which was, represents about 73% of the budget. This particular fiscal year, this includes about $9 million of bond proceeds, as well as use of fund balance for road uh, resurfacing and capital maintenance. Some areas of interest that were included in uh, this year's budget um, include a project for accessible pedestrian signals, crosswalk upgrades, pedestrian safety and lighting enhancements, sidewalk gap eliminations, bike lane enhancements, sidewalk repair and replacement, and the alternative transportation budget includes a couple of projects um, that are installed bike lanes. Uh, for a total of $5.1 million. Uh, these projects are scattered throughout the budget and are in different areas of funding sources. Um, as I listened to your conversation, I heard some conversation about traffic calming. Um, in this year's budget, we were able to increase the program funding to a total of 225, which is about 100 or so more thousand dollars than we have annually been allocating to that effort. So um, we are hopeful that we'll be able to address some of the project backlog. Uh, traffic calming usually coincides with our annual resurfacing program. So those projects typically take place along with that contract. Um, I also heard conversations about sidewalk snow. Um, also in this year's budget, we have uh, kicked off a pilot program um, that is volunteer-based and will be coordinated by our Give365 out of uh, our parks area. Um, it will align volunteers with um, elderly or disabled individuals who need help uh, clearing the snow from their walks. There's also a component of the county mental health uh, millage, the 20% allocation towards pedestrian safety as adopted by city council. This itemizes the 20% share of that anticipated revenue of 540,000, 231,000 to continue our streetlight replacement program, $135,000 that we have been sending over for crosswalk lighting upgrades, um, a small insurance allocation, and then finally, a outreach and education category that we also use as a, a contingency should uh, we get into a situation where we are, we're out of money for uncontrolled crosswalks as we're often at the mercy of DTE, the timing sometimes is off. So sometimes we utilize this bucket temporarily to get some lighting installed. For road maintenance this upcoming season, Engineering has a plan to resurface 11.1 miles, and then capital maintenance will be conducted on 25.1 miles. The goal for pavement still remains at 80% of roads to be good in good or better condition by 2026. And we fund that effort by various funding sources, including our street millage, Act 51 revenues, uh, Washtenaw County road millage, uh, the bond proceed that we intend to issue, grants and other sources. And we typically like to leverage this work with uh, partners in the area should we be able to do so. As I indicated, city council just approved uh, at the April 18th meeting, the initiative to move forward with the bond initiative that was introduced during our December budget planning session to city council. We received um, significant positive in, um, feedback regarding that initiative. So we have moved forward with that process. We intend to issue a bond that totals about $15 million. Uh, we'll pay that $15 million debt service from the three funds listed here, the major and local street fund, as well as the street bridge and sidewalk millage. 
Uh, the next steps to be undertaken by our engineering unit will be to provide a revised schedule, develop the construction schedule and communication strategy to let folks know that how we are spending these bond proceeds. And that's all I have. If there's any questions, I'm happy to entertain them. Thank you. Um, if you could go ahead and unshare your screen, you find it easier to see who's raising their hand. Um, at this point, I think the raise hand button is working pretty well. So, but I see, um, Brett, you go ahead. Thank you. Um, in the Act 51 slides, um, we spent some time looking at the revenue is around 13.7 million or I think 13 in the high 13s estimated by the next slide, the expenditures, the Act 51 expenditures were around 30 million. Um, can you explain the discrepancy with that? Right, as I indicated, that will include some bond proceeds as well as use of fund balance for both funds to get us up to the, the, the 30 million. Right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? I'm excited about the increase to traffic calming. I didn't know that that was coming this year. Julie. So the, the traffic calming money is all for neighborhood calming, is that right? So is, 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 there, is there any money dedicated to major streets calming? Um, not new money. There's still the money that was allocated during last year's budget cycle that has yet to be expended. So there isn't any new, new funding added to that effort at this point. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and just to further clarify that, if I may, Marty, um, you know, that money that was in last year's budget um, will roll over to this next year so that we can continue to work on it. And that is to really work on the process and project identification. Um, but we don't necessarily have a dedicated like capital stream for it yet because we're kind of waiting for that process to roll out and get developed. Um, and then, you know, Marty, close your ears. Maybe that'll be part <laughs> of the next fiscal year budget. So not fiscal year 23, but fiscal year, we go into another biennium budget in 24, 25, that might be a good time for us to present like, you know, some projects either through the CIP and or through the, you know, the budget process for consideration. I was muted. I have a question that's maybe more for Raymond and Nick than for Marty, but seeing the, um, the road bond, which is gonna be like bringing things, doing a lot of work to to upgrade, update streets more quickly. I'm curious about, and, and also talking about how that's the same contract for road resurfacing and the traffic calming. I'm wondering if there's any possibility of integrating calming into the sort of the road, like the new road work that's gonna be happening. I know we look at things like adding bike lanes and often there's like a road diet that happens, but I wonder about incorporating other potential calming um, methods in like in those projects that are already happening or going to be happening? Um, we do some little things here and there. I mean, we've done some bump outs and things like that, but the, uh, um, uh, the you know, the most common traffic calming, you know, device that gets used is the vertical elements, the speed tables and the speed humps. Mm -hmm. um, and those need to go through the, the traffic calming program specifically, but uh, mm -hmm. We, we do uh, work in a few things here and there where we hear uh, of, uh, you know, desire and need for them. Okay. Because I wonder about things like, I mean, continuous sidewalks is a thing that I know is in the vision, the, the new A20, or yeah, vision zero plan. And um, yeah, just sort of, as we, we have this like expanded palette of possibilities now, and I, I'm curious about how we get to start using them. Yeah, you, you mentioned sidewalks and um, I mean, we're in our sidewalk gap prioritization. We look to see where there's places where we might align streets that we're planning to resurface with, you know, if, if some of those that are on our resurfacing list have high priority sidewalk gaps on it, we'll work them into that program as well. 
um, when we get the opportunity to do that. Great. Yeah, I was I was thinking more about like um, where the crosswalk is the same height as the sidewalk and cars have to go like, which I think is sometimes called. Okay, like, a ra it's a raised crosswalk. Yeah, yeah. Right, like, right. Yeah, again, that's a vertical element that does have to go through the, uh, um, the through the, the traffic calming program. Okay. Specifically. Hey, Erica, maybe we can add that to our list is <laughs> making it so we can do those things without putting them through the traffic calming. Well, I think my thought is if we're revisiting our traffic calming process, we might talk about what, what elements that might be a conversation that we, we might have as a body. Yeah. Cool. And staff might provide input on, which is, which are, which are, which is beneficial, which is not. Yeah. So I'll bring us back to the budget, other budget questions. Brett. Uh, this might be specific, but um, so the current fiscal year has money allocated for equip build projects. And just more broadly speaking, um, you know, is there any way to better understand from what, what you've shown, what effect um, having our new transportation uh, plan that was just approved? Is there anything you can point to in the budget that says here's, here's some money for the quick builds that are mentioned in the new transportation plan or other initiatives that, that are coming out of that recently approved plan that can be reflected anyway? in what you've shown us? From my standpoint, what we use to develop the budget are requests from staff or um, what is presented in the capital improvements plan. We were able to incorporate all those requests and anything that in the, in the capital improvements plan. So from my standpoint, I can't say specifically if things are included that are in line with that plan that was adopted that perhaps Raymond would be better suited to answer that question. Yeah, well, I, Brett, I think the good news here is that um, I, you're going to steal a little of my thunder here, but um, council did approve the ARPA uh, project slate at their last meeting and included in that is $2 million for Vision Zero implementation to do exactly the types of projects that we're talking about, the quick build. So the idea was, you know, um, Erica sponsored an amendment as part of last year's budget that put some we'll call it seed money, starter money for Vision Zero implementation. Uh, and we are diligently working on that. We're going to have a presentation on that in just a second. Um, and then we put forward this other project to kind of keep the momentum going. So that $2 million should be able to stretch us out over a couple years. Um, and, you know, we have roughly, you know, $600,000 thereabouts. So if we you know, take that $2 million and spread it out over three or four years, then that kind of keeps that same level of funding. Uh, and quick build projects are a little bit, you know, less expensive than a, a major capital project. And then, as you've always heard me say before, we will look to piggyback off of some of those resurfacing projects that both Marty and Nick alluded to earlier, that, you know, if there's preventive maintenance or things like that, and there's an opportunity for us to squeeze in a bike lane or, you know, bump out or whatever to bring some additional safety and, and other enhancements, we can can look into do that too. So it's a sort of multifaceted approach. There isn't necessarily one single pot of funding that we tap into. We try to, you know, go off of existing projects and then use maybe this ARPA money. And we even have other pending requests for other sources of funding from external sources as well. All right, well, I'm not seeing other questions. This was an incredibly helpful conversation. I really appreciated how you pulled together all of the different funding sources so that we could get a complete picture of transportation expenditures in this year's budget. I think this was really great. So thank you, Marty. Thank you. All right, and we are gonna move on to Vision Zero implementation plan. So uh, at our last meeting, we were gonna talk about the recommendations that were coming out of the implementation plan initiative. And I think Raymond, are you gonna walk us through some of those? But then there was also a committee. The, this is separate from the committee? Yeah, since the committee hasn't met that on the agenda, we'll probably bypass that to a certain degree because okay. what I'm about to show you is what they discussed at their last meeting, which was in February. Uh, we had tentatively scheduled the meeting today, but due to the conflicts with Transportation Commission, we thought it was best to reschedule that. So uh, we have a call with the consultant to figure out the next meeting date. Um, 
So what I will just quickly highlight is um, the presentation that I'm going to quickly go over is a, a excerpt or a subset of the entire presentation um, that gives a lot of the background and justification and you know process that went into this. Um, I'll kind of skip past all of that and just get to the meat and potatoes, which is the locations and some of the treatments that are being considered with this you know first pot of money that we got from Erica as part of that budget process. So again, as you may recall, the transportation plan, the moving together towards Vision Zero, um, has identified in it these Tier 1 and Tier 2 intersections and Tier 1 and Tier 2 corridors. Um, and tier, those tiers refer to kind of safety concern areas. Um, and so what we did is working with the consultant, we again tried to be very data driven. We looked at, you know, which areas kind of um, could benefit from some near term improvements. Um, I will say we did eliminate some locations for consideration based on maybe certain levels of complexity. Um, so uh, my friends at MDOT who might be listening, we avoided anything on an MDOT trunk line just because we thought we wouldn't be able to implement the project this fiscal year if we had to get a whole bunch of state approvals. And then in a similar vein, if there was you know, a capital project that was programmed, you know, in the next year or so, we didn't want to have to undo whatever we did. Uh, we'd rather work through that project uh, to look at opportunities for improvements. So these are the things that uh, rose to the top with all those considerations in mind. Uh, for intersections, we are honing in on Glenn and Fuller and South University and State. And then for corridors, um, a section of Packard between Maine and State, a section of Washington between Maine and Fletcher, section of North Maple from uh, M14 to Jackson, and a section of Ann from Maine to Fourth. So uh, taking them a little bit out of order, what I'll do is just quickly highlight what uh, went into that. Um, I'll, this is an overview slide, so I'll, we'll go into the more detailed slides. So, uh, for Washington Street, uh, from um, Maine to Fletcher, the uh, the idea is, you know, we, we saw some crashes involving pedestrians. There were some head-on left turn crashes, and just the volume of crashes kind of stood out. And so some of the strategies are to increase visibility of pedestrians and reduce, reduce turning speeds, and that'll be accomplished by a series of bump outs with paint and hardened center lines. Um, hardened center lines are, are going to be a fairly new treatment for us, so we're still kind of, you know, thinking through what that might exactly entail. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the concept in other communities that really the idea is to um, uh, reduce the speed of vehicles as they make a turn so that they don't kind of cut the corner and take these turns at a high speed. So you, you can put some sort of, you know, vertical device either along the double yellow line or on the receiving approach to make sure that kind of that vehicles take that uh, turn a little bit more judiciously. Um, and then just to show you that this was data driven, I won't go into a lot of details on a lot of this stuff, but you know, what we really tried to focus in on, you know, what types of injuries occurred, what were the type of crash types to make sure that the countermeasure that we're proposing is adequate to hopefully address, you know, some of the, the problems that we've seen out there. Um, so uh, next, I'll focus on Packard from Maine to State. Uh, so there is a missing section of uh, bicycle lane. For those of you that biked Packard, you, I'm sure you've experienced this, that uh, the bike lane kind of drops when you get to uh, State. So the idea is that there's enough room out there for us to be able to put one in. Um, and so again, looking at uh, the volume of crashes and crashes in involving cyclists, um, and what are the things that we can do to reduce vehicle speeds by narrowing those lanes and putting in a high comfort bike facility. Um, and so this is the sort of treatment we're looking at. I mean, not this in, in, in its exact form, but some sort of protected uh, bicycle facility uh, with a vertical element. Um, and then you also see down here, uh, there's some opportunities for us to maybe tighten up some of the uh, turning radii. Uh, to again slow down vehicles as they make those turns uh, in this instance at Thompson Street and Packard um, and some of those intersections will be evaluated on a kind of intersection by intersection basis going through this corridor. Uh, Maple Road, a uh, similar sort of situation uh, where we have you know varying levels of, of bike facility. Um, there might be an opportunity for us to add uh, protected lanes by adding some sort of vertical element. 
Um, you know, there's a small buffer on that section of maple, so uh, with and there aren't a lot of drive cuts, so there might be an opportunity for us to, you know, put in those vertical elements. Um, one thing that I will note, a, a sidebar related to any of these vertical elements, we are in discussions right now with Public Works about um, their street sweeping and winter maintenance equipment. Uh, right now, the facilities that you see downtown, such as on William, on Division, on First, and the one that's going in on Catherine Miller, um, those are those bi-directional cycle tracks. And the, the benefit of those, especially from a maintenance perspective, is they can get a full-size vehicle in. Uh, whether it be a full-size sweeper or a full-size plow to clear those facilities. When we start talking about bike lanes, the more traditional bike lanes where there's one on each side of the roadway, it would require a smaller piece of equipment if we were to keep the vertical elements in year-round. So again, these posts, if they're going to stay in year-round, we need to make sure that the equipment can get in there to clear those paths. So um, we are trying to find a solution and working with Public Works on what that piece of equipment would look like. Um, and, you know, what's on the market. And we also, you know, on a sidebar, the city is pursuing a green fleet, um, you know, approach to all of our new vehicles. So not only do we need the right size vehicle, but we need to make sure it's, you know, uh, kind of zero emission vehicle and it's electric as well. So um, trying to check all the boxes that we can to make sure that this works. Um, so again, you know, uh, this strategy would reduce vehicle speeds and increase uh, comfort for cyclists. Um, Glenn and Fuller, um, we're seeing some crashes invi involving cyclists, uh, and then there's also some crashes in involving um, uh, vehicles, especially left-turning vehicles. Uh, and so some of the strategies here are to reduce speeds kind of around this bend, um, especially around the, the vehicles that are turning onto Fuller. Um, and increase visibility of cyclists. So that might be some pavement markings. Uh, so for example, you have the uh, green pigment um, shared lane markings uh, through the intersection, maybe some hardened center line to reduce the turning speed of vehicles, um, and then um, a hardened center line with a paint and post median, um, and also reduce that turning radius. Again, you can kind of see some of the data that went into those considerations. Um, South U and State is another location. Um, this is, you know, probably not a surprise. It's just a very high volume intersection, especially with a lot of pedestrians and cyclists. Um, so the question is, what are the things that we can do? This is uh, um, an always stop condition. So um, what are the things we can do to simplify the intersection and prioritize the pedestrian and bicycle travel? So some of the things that we're thinking about doing is maybe removing the turn lanes. Um, and add some bump outs or, you know, almost like uh, pedestrian refuge island style type things, uh, depending upon which fits. Uh, and then some hard and center line as well to kind of give that traffic calming effect um, on this roadway. Um, I will note to, you know, Brian, who's on the call, we, we obviously, you know, this is a very heavily used transit corridor. So we want to make sure that the solutions we come up with on state um, you know, don't um, negatively impact transit operations. So we would uh, be sure to coordinate with uh, the ride and, and even blue buses, uh, University of Michigan buses use this route pretty extensively as well uh, to make sure that their operations are maintained um, uh, through here. Uh, Liberty and Stadium, um, again, some concerns out here are some head-on and left turn crashes. The volume of crashes was uh, particularly high some crashes involving cyclists, um, and just these big, wide, you know, intersection, which makes it hard for cyclists and, and pedestrians to cross. So some of the things that we're thinking about is, um, again, some green pigmentation for the, the bike lane, uh, getting through the intersection, maybe reduce, reducing the, the curb radius or turning radius with paint and post, um, and hardened center line again at certain intersection approaches, uh, and this intersection only has, I think, half of the pedestrian um, signals, or what we call ped heads, have the countdown feature. So making sure that the entire intersection has those countdown ped heads. All right, um, on Ann Street, um, some crashes involving pedestrians and cyclists. And again, just the volume of crashes is what kind of jumped out at us. So the things that we're trying to do is reduce that exposure um, of pedestrians and increase visibility of cyclists, 
And in order to do that, we're talking about doing paint and post bump outs um, and, you know, marking the uh, bike lane with uh, that green pigmentation. Um, I think I've used the term paint and post, but just to clarify what I mean by that, you know, so for example, if we look at a bump out, instead of putting a concrete extension here, um, you know, the pavement would just be painted a certain color that would differentiate it from the travel lane. And then you would have the vertical elements like delineators, bollards that would um, kind of be stuck in the road that would, you know, discourage vehicles from kind of encroaching in that space. So it, it creates a sort of virtual um, bump out uh, without, uh, you know, concrete necessarily. Um, all right. And so uh, just to let you know, we are working with the consultant. Um, for to move these projects forward. They are working on the designs. They're getting us quantities. We're helping to refine that. Uh, we had a meeting with them this week and next week to kind of make sure that we're moving this along. Um, they are starting their work on the major streets traffic calming project process. You know, as we kind of transition from this first round of quick builds, we have some other uh, deliverables in their scope. And so major streets traffic calming is one of them. I know many of you expressed interest on that earlier when we talked about the policy agenda setting. Um, and then we're also working on the public engagement initiative. initiative. Um, one of the things I will say on the public engage engagement initiative is that it is going to be more focused on what we would call an inform approach instead of a consult approach. You know, so many times we kind of go out to the public with a blank slate and say, you know, tell us what you think. Well, we feel like since the transportation plan is so new and a lot of these locations have been identified and the process has been pretty well established, we feel like we have a lot of the public support that we need in terms of how we identify these locations. So instead, what we want to do is we say, hey, we heard you, transportation plan uh, was adopted, now we're putting in an emotion, here's what's coming and why, right? So a, a bit of an explainer. Uh, we, we're working on like yard signs to put them at the locations to say, hey, what is this? More information, check out this and have a QR code. Um, and we really want to kind of test it. And then what we might do, and, and don't hold me to this, but then the idea is after we put it in the ground for a while, then seek some, some feedback about how well do you think this is working? Um, and then that way that will help us to refine what we did and maybe scale it to other places, or if we have to tweak things a little bit, if it's not having the you know, um, results that we're hoping for, uh, we can go back and tweak it itself. So, so that's kind of our approach. That's what we're working on uh, right now. Um, and uh, we're hopeful that that approach and strategy, um, it, it's a little bit different than what we've done in the past, but hopefully it'll resonate with, with folks as they understand you know, the process on how we got here and how we're, we're putting it into motion. So that's what I wanted to highlight for you all. Um, and then I'm happy to entertain any questions you have. There'll be more on this. We, we will have an upcoming meeting, hopefully by the next Transportation Commission meeting, I can come back with something a little bit more refined. Uh, and as you know, both Julie and Brett are kind of integrated into that process as well. So uh, they can kick me under the table if I uh, misrepresent anything. Great. Questions, comments? Erica. Yeah, just a, excited to see these rolling out, um, particularly the one along Maple Road. And um, I know that's been asked for in, in the fifth ward, so I'm excited. Um, I, and I think the communication strategy makes sense in terms of um, just, you know, letting letting the community know that, you know, this is a continuation of the planning process and, and helping them understand. I, I guess one piece around this, and this may be too labor intensive. So I'm just kind of curious if staff is thinking about doing this or if this might be something that folks in the community might need to be thinking about. Um, just little mini video segments that kind of have a, you know, maybe somebody using using an intersection before something is being used, you know, before the quick build is there and then demonstrating, you know, the quick build afterwards so that um, they can be shared a little bit on social media or also just help to explain what's going on for folks who missed a meeting. I don't know if that's something that's anticipated or Yeah, I'll take that back to the team when we meet. So um, I, I don't know if we have um, anticipated videos, but videos are a lot easier to produce now. I mean, they may not be a high production virtual reality thing, but we could even just narrate a quick little slide, you know, with before and after. So I, I, I will take your suggestion to the team. I think it's a good one. 
I feel like it might also be helpful, Erica, to sort of like help your fellow council members sort of gird themselves a little bit because when something like this happens, there's always outcry. Like there's all, people are always gonna object loudly. And I think it's gonna be so important for the city to like hold our ground and say, no, this like people are getting hurt here. We have to like, we have to do this. So just thinking about if there are ways to sort of like smooth, not having it be an approval thing, but like at the same time preparing CMs a little bit to like withstand the inevitable and maybe there won't be onslaught that'd be amazing but you know change is difficult um and we definitely hear about it when it happens um personally i i i advocate for the rolling out a couple of projects and then a really big project where we get like a lot of feedback on the big project with the, the other smaller ones like first yeah. nationally and then we rolled out main street and my goodness that that changed the, the, the conversation <laughs> no yeah. um yeah. no but i do think i point taken i think i could definitely um you know let folks at council know that this is coming forward and alert you know uh, alert them that the you know these different projects and, and help share so that they they know what's what's coming awesome thank you I'm excited about vertical some some protect like vertical elements on Packard. That's you know I want to Dutchify the whole thing, but I'll take a, I'll take a couple blocks if I can get it. Um, all right, well we can keep moving. Um, that was actually the last like sort of full item. Now we've got like our standard stuff. So moving on to staff report and updates, which is also Raymond. Very good. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take that again. So as is always the case, I'll just kind of highlight what's changed from month to month. Um, you know, it's always interesting. The January report is really big because we put a whole bunch of projects in and then there's a lot of work that's going on behind the scenes with design and, you know, uh, letting and all that sort of thing and did. So this is a pretty short report because we're kind of in the doldrums before the summer construction season kicks off. And so uh, it's only a couple pages long. But um uh, annual street resurfacing project, there isn't a lot of new update there. Just uh, check the project website for updates. Uh, Sio Church Road, the only big change there is the schedule changed. Uh, it's moved to summer of 2022. Uh, I think it before it had said spring of 2022, so um, just that. Uh, Platte Road and Earhart was previously listed as a single project, um, but now it's broken out as two discrete projects, so they're labeled separately here. Uh, Platt includes resurfacing, water main replacement work, um, and pedestrian improvements. That will be this summer. Um, Earhart is um, kind of a, a sister project. Um, it's between Gettys and Green Hills. Uh, it also includes resurfacing and addition of bike lanes. Um, it has been delayed due to requirements related to the federal funding, uh, but it's still expected to be constructed uh, later this year, summer, fall of 2022. Um, Medical Center Drive Bridge, um, the language is the same. Um, Nick, I wasn't sure if there's any other update to give on this. Um, we weren't sure if there were maybe some late breaking developments, but uh, if there are, that would be no, the time. There's, there's not, no, no. <laughs> I, I'm okay. still, I'm still no. waiting for more information, so nothing more to share right now. All right, um, on streetlight implementation, we, uh, DT did complete a handful of streetlight installs over the last uh, month or so. So we have new streetlights on Bayless, Stone School, South Main and Hoover, South Main and Davis, Barton at Chandler, Longshore and Northside, and then uh, State Street and the Michigan Union. Uh, and we're currently tracking outages. DT has about 310 that they've addressed so far this year. Um, one other thing I will note on streetlight outages, um, the, uh, the, we have a consultant that is doing preventive maintenance on a lot of our streetlights where they're going in and, and replacing streetlights that are, you know, soon to be functionally obsolete or, you know, in danger of falling down, that sort of thing. Um, so some of the streetlight that outages that are occurring are actually induced, right, that we turn them off because we're replacing them. So we are getting kind of an uptick in some of these outage reports because it's related to some of the uh, maintenance work that's happening. So it, it's not great news, but it's also good news because then they will be in tip top shape when they get back online. Um, and uh, Corby is the consultant that's helping us with that. 
Uh, and then the last update I have, which I've already mentioned to you, is the American Rescue Plan Act funding, or ARPA. Council did make a decision on that um, earlier this month, uh, and it did include that $2 million for Vision Zero plan implementation. Um, you may recall that you've heard me present in the past on Miller Catherine um, cycle track or bike facility, you know, signature bike facility that would run the whole length of Miller Catherine, kind of builds off the DDA project that's happening this summer. Uh, that project did not get chosen. Um, it, it did not score particularly well in the public survey, so uh, that one kind of got cut. But we are still throwing that out there to other folks to see if there's interest in funding it, um, both federal uh, designations and others. So uh, it's by no means dead. We're still trying to uh, find uh, some other funding sources for it. So um, keep your fingers crossed. Uh, hopefully we can get some funding to, to move that project forward as well. And those are all the updates I wanted to give tonight. Happy to take any questions you might have. Thanks. All right, not seeing any questions. So we are gonna move on to um, the different kinds of uh, reports. I think starting with the liaison reports. And I think, um, yeah. Um, Woo. Thanks. Um, yeah, just wanted to talk about parking. Um, Planning Commission, I, I want to say about two weeks ago, did vote to recommend the elimination of parking minimums. Um, it is actually going to come back to Planning Commission on May 17th. There was some confusion and some contradictions about that minimum um, in specific areas. So there's a little bit of conflict within the UDC because there's a lot of different sections like daycare with minimums, et cetera. So it has to be scrubbed a little further. Um, so I imagine it's gonna go to council in a little uh, over a month, but know that um, it, it has pretty much unanimous support on, on planning commission. So just wanted to give that heads up. I think that's about it, so. Awesome, thank you. Brian. Just wanted to, uh let commission members know that our board is voting is is i'm sorry is expected to vote tomorrow night uh on putting a millage on the ballot in august uh we are inviting public comment uh and expect there to be a a healthy debate uh on uh, a millage but it it does if you go and look at the millage plan uh, a lot of what we talked about tonight uh increasing frequency and increasing hours of service and having better night ride service, all of those kinds of things uh, are in that plan uh, as part of it. So uh, next month, I'll be able to report whether we're going on in August or not. Thank you. Lieutenant Sherba, I have in my notes that you were gonna be giving an update um, about a recent crash. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, I just want to give the uh, commission just a quick update on a crash we had back on um, March 30th. Uh, so it occurred on, I don't, didn't bring my notes, but it was between 4.30 and 5.30 in the morning on West Stadium near Thaler. Um, West Stadium kind of runs north and south at that point. So this, uh, there was a small SUV who was in the right lane going eastbound, but it was essentially, it's like I said, south, southeast at that point. And there was a cyclist who was crossing from east to west. It would have been just north of the crosswalk. Um, there is an illuminated crosswalk right there, um, just south of Thaler. Um, but the cyclist didn't use that, didn't um, hit the button to illuminate the crosswalk, um, but did cross the road um, just north of that. Um, riding, not not walking the bike, and was struck by that uh, small SUV. Uh, impact knocked the cyclist off the bike and um, about 40 feet forward. Our investigators are are still looking into it. Uh, it's about an 81-year-old uh, man. Uh, he did die um, from the uh, injuries uh, that morning. Uh, and it's, again, still being investigated, um, as is our typical protocol. Once the investigation is complete, we do send them to the prosecutor for review. In this instance, 
Uh, I don't think uh, there would be any charges authorized, but certainly that's not up to me. Um, but it, it appeared that, again, it was uh, it was in the dark. The cyclist was in dark clothing with a hood on, uh, with a red bicycle uh, crossing outside of the crosswalk, and and was struck. I can I can answer any questions if anyone has any um, about that incident. Erica. Yeah, thank you so much for providing the update on that location. Do you mind if I um, connect you with somebody in the community who's been, organization's been working to put up a ghost bike? And so they've been just trying to figure out exactly what the location was. You described it pretty well, but they might have some follow-up questions around that. And a ghost Absolutely. bike. You can pass my info on to anybody you like about that, sure. Okay, thanks so much. Thank you. Other questions? All right, yeah, thank you for that update. That's a tragedy always, every time. Um, are there other um, liaison reports? Okay, oh, Erica. Yeah, I was trying to think of anything that hasn't been reported on. Um, I guess uh, council did adopt the transit oriented development out on, um, South State, so that was something that came through from Planning Commission was was adopted. So um, got that new designation, um, and I think everything else I was going to report on the the millage. I encourage folks to provide feedback to to the ride tomorrow night to the board. I, I know they're going to be looking for feedback on that. Um, and also, my understanding is that the long there's been an extension of the. Uh, feedback on the long range plan as well, but that's been extended a little bit. Um, so I think that, that was all that came out of Watts today. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so we're gonna move on to general commission member communications. And I wanted to start by acknowledging that this is the last meeting for two of our commissioners. Uh, for both Aureli and Jim are moving off of the commission. Uh, and so I just wanted to take a moment and thank you both for your service to this commission and your participation in the committees. Uh, it's been wonderful to have both of your perspectives on the commission and we will miss you. And also I think there's like congratulations in order to, I think Aureli because you're graduating and Jim because your business is doing so well that you don't have time for us anymore. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you both. Um, for your time. I don't know if you have wanted to like say anything. You don't have to say anything. I'm just gonna give you like you can if you want. Yeah. I'll say something. Um, so this has been fun. I've enjoyed working with everyone in the limited capacity that I've been able to participate. Um, yeah, and uh, thank you. Uh, allowing me to, you know, be here. And I thank everyone for doing just a great job. And we are, you know, I'll say it again, we hear it from the community at the door. So, um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. And I also want to say a big thanks. Um, it was, it's been, the joy of a learning experience like being here with you all and I really have learned a lot from the perspective that each of you bring and just the different investment um and also we'll never forget the passionate conversations we had on snow removal um so really learned so much from each of you and that is one of the instances that really stick out to me um and I will miss monthly meetings but I look forward to connecting with you all um outside of that too awesome Thank you. Um, this also means that there will be openings on the commission. So if you have people you know who you think would be good for the commission, please feel free to send them my way. I have at this point a standard spiel that I've been sending to folks and I'm happy to pass that along to anyone who is trying to recruit someone to, to come and join us. So um, yeah, so that was, that was my thing. I don't, I don't know if there are other commissioner communications. All right, looks like Jim's cat is coming in to say something to us. 
<laughs> um, awesome. So next up is call for agenda items. Um, sounds like we've got a couple that came out of our earlier discussion this evening that we might want to bring bring back for agenda items. Um, if anyone has anything else that they'd like us to discuss in the coming months, now's a good time to suggest it. Yeah, Molly, what I can do, let me just um, tell you what's on the docket tentatively. So uh, first, we do anticipate bringing the Main Street reconfiguration back to you. Uh, we are finalizing the memo right now and, and kind of crunching all the numbers to make sure, you know, everything um, looks good on it. But we'll be coming back to you with, you know, our proposal on that, which will then be forwarded on to City Council as well. Uh, similarly, you've heard us talk about the South Division uh, cycle track. The idea is that, you know, the DDA project ends at Packard. Um, there's an opportunity to possibly extend that down to Hoover. Uh, and so we uh, uh, have, again, we did public input on that as well as Main Street. We're uh, working on a memo. That one will require action of the Transportation Commission. I think you've heard me say this before because it would require removal of parking and removal of parking is a council action which we would be soliciting feedback and a recommendation from this commission on. Um, so we think both of those will be up. Um, the other thing that um, the Office of Sustainability and Innovation has asked to give a presentation on the sustainable energy utility. Um, this is one of the policy items that you all identified uh, in the local agenda. Uh, and so Missy and her team are working on that strategy. So they just released a memo this week that I'll include in your packet and Simi Barr, who is on Missy's team, is expecting to join us. Um, then the other kind of tentative ones are um, this time of year is when highway safety improvement programs or what we sometimes call HSIP, uh, those grants are due. Uh, and so again, these are kind of data driven. We try to look at areas where uh, there are crash patterns and, and proven countermeasures that we can implement. Um, this might be, you know, countdown pedestrian heads or things like that. So uh, I suspect we'll be coming to you with what our proposal will be there. And then if we have a Vision Zero implementation plan a meeting, we'll come back with an update on that too. Um, and then Molly, to your um, suggestion, and, and I think it came from both what you were saying and what Megan was saying is, since I will uh, kind of opportunistically take advantage of their presence, I, I'll probably have one or two engineers here. So if if you all do wish to have a discussion about either no turn on red and or ped recall, aka beg button, ped beg button, um, it might be a good time to do so since I'll I'll have people smarter than me here at the meeting anyway. So great. Um, let's, do, let's do it. For that? Okay. I've already warned them, so they're they're <laughs> they're lined up for it. Julie. Yeah, since the um on time transit issue ranked pretty high. Um, I'd like to follow up on that somehow. So I think it was like four years ago, the first time I heard in one of the presentations from the staff that you know it was possible to prioritize the signals so that the buses could go through. Um, and, and I was like, oh, okay, so maybe that's going to happen soon, you know, and it's been years and nothing has happened. And what Brian said about needing certain types of data in order to make that work and also the um, bus lane idea work make, makes a lot of sense as to why maybe it hasn't happened. And I wondered if, if we could have a discussion about or a presentation from staff about what kind of data would be needed and if, if that can be collected so that we could make some data-driven decisions about that or recommendations. We don't make decisions, we just make recommendations. Right, um, but yeah, that sounds great. I'd love to see that on a future agenda. Yeah, and I, I will say, you, you may or may not know this, I, we may have reported on it briefly in the past, but the ride is actually conducting a, they, they just finished a solicitation. Uh, Brian, I, I your camera is off, so I don't want to steal your thunder, but maybe I'll turn it over to you and let you uh, say what I think I was about to say. <laughs> we are, uh, we are, we did, I'm sorry, we did just hire uh, a consultant to help us with that. Um, it does require coordination of the system that we use with the city's uh, signal priority system. Um, and the things like that you reported about with uh, directing you across campus instead of to the CCTC, like those are some of the data points that need to be 
accurate because it need that that's the information that would feed into the signal priority to say that there's a bus coming. So um, working out all of those kinks uh, is important to get it to work. But I'm excited to say that we're we're one step closer to to getting it underway. Yeah, one of the reasons why I wanted Brian to bring that up, and thank you, Brian, is I I think you know that project is just kicking off. So maybe next month might be a little premature to have you know something really concrete to share with the transportation commission. So I I might suggest if if Brian agrees to let it um, develop a little bit, and then once you know some recommendations start to formulate out of that effort. Um, then, then we can come and, you know, the, the ride has been very gracious and, um, Luke Liu on our team, uh, has, has been, you know, invited to participate, um, in that process. So, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of in lockstep with the ride on that. So, so I, I only say that, that, you know, the timing and sequencing might just be such, let's wait till we get enough information to make it a meaningful discussion for you all. Yeah, I think that makes sense. All right. Well, I think, let's see. First of all, the next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, May 18th at 7 p.m. It will be a virtual meeting. And if there are no objections, we will adjourn today's meeting. All right, we are adjourned. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, Thank you everybody.